because they control the natural resources that go into this bat, that kind of counterfeiting isn't as much of a problem for them. But they say the economic issues with China could still hit them pretty hard. Dairy farming isn't designated as a seasonal activity like other types of farming, so they aren't eligible for migrant workers. They can go much bigger, and they are. This is a 60,000 gallon tank. They can go up to 70,000, and orders for big tanks like this are rolling in because of explosions in two industries. Bellinger Brook has subsided, and they're not worried about that levee flowing over or breaking, which would have flooded much more of downtown. But as you can see, parts of downtown are pretty bad as they are. They've got mops, cleaning brushes, rubber gloves, bleach, and other things that you might need to clean up your house if that's what you're trying to do. They've also got personal hygiene kits. They say they've got about 15 of those left today, but they're trying to get more of all of these supplies ready for tomorrow. Hi, Solomon. Sergeant Dominic LeCurry is en route to his hometown of Frankfurt. He landed earlier in Albany, and they're taking him on a procession from Little Falls here to his hometown, where they wait to welcome him with open arms. On Main Street here in Frankfurt, they've got signs saying, Welcome Home, as well as his photograph in one of the windows. Veterans groups and fire departments from Little Falls to here are waiting to welcome him as well, but for his family, this reunion could have come a whole lot sooner. The airport is one of those places where you hate to wait, but Sergeant Dominic LeCarrie's plane touching down brings a bittersweet end to the hardest time his family will ever wait through. We're happy and joyful about it, of course, uh, that he's being returned. The memories come rushing back as Uncle Dominic, as they call him, finally comes home. He was the ideal big brother, that's all I can say. When you, when you were a friend of his, you were a friend for life. That was, that was it. Or a brother for life, in the case of August the Carey. It's 69 years since my brother's been missing. Uh, we had no, not known what's happened to him, anything about what had happened, other than he went missing on a mission. This is Uncle Dominic right here. Dominic LeCarey was a gunner in World War II. In 1944, his attack bomber disappeared in the South Pacific. Early on, of course, we held up hope that he would be found and returned, uh, hopefully alive, then maybe injured, and then possibly dead as the years went by. But he was never forgotten, not by his niece Georgiana Lizandrelli, and not by her mother. She would stand in the front window. We lived on Main Street, and the buses would come by every half hour or better. And she'd always be looking out the window and ask her, Mom, who are you looking for? He says, I'm looking for a stranger. Even his niece, Jerry Peckham, who never met that stranger, was touched. As I was growing up, and just because the prominence of the picture in the house, at a young age, I grew a deep respect for the military. Uncle Dominic became a revered but incomplete family story. Then right, last right. December, August got a call from the military. They were establishing a DNA bank uh, to help identify the remains of the MIAs that were being found. He said yes and didn't think much about it until another call came. But when we got the phone call, it was a shocker that uh, they were able to identify uh, partial skeletal remains from the DNA. A team found LeCarrie's plane deep in the jungle of Papua New Guinea. In addition to Uncle, Uncle Augie's DNA, they had found Uncle Dominic's dog tags. The theory is that they hit the side of a mountain, unable to see it in bad weather, but it brings an end to the family mystery. It's joyful and it's mournful. You know, uh, uh, it's, it's very difficult to explain unless you're going through it. It's like a fresh loss of the family again. Of course, that family story now finally coming to an end a lifetime later, Solomon. They're just doing what they do best. How's everybody doing? Good, good. You guys need a hand with anything down in no, here? I had it. Oh. National Guardsmen giving a helping hand. Wow, thanks. That worked. Sticks. Man, that stinks. Right when it's needed most, they're picking up the mess from two floods, one street at a time. But for one staff sergeant, Corey Guido. So, uh, my father's Lou, Louis Guido, up on five us, the RV dealership. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. This job is closer to home. I've been through uh, deployment to Iraq. I went to Hurricane Sandy, did Hurricane Irene relief, and you know, it, it's hometown. It hurts. It hits a little bit more, you know, to the heart because it is your hometown. Missing a standard Independence Day is no matter. You come and take care of family when you can. 
Guido says it's just another day when people need some help. That's why we're coming in to put some muscle to it. Even for the guardsmen who aren't local, like Staff Sergeant Kevin Lang out of Buffalo. The mud makes it so much heavier. These are all the fireworks they need. Happy Fourth of July. Fourth of July. Oh. We had a barbecue. 20 minutes of relief we can bring them before they go on to other, you know, other tasks. Uh, like actually rebuilding the insides of their houses, I mean, that, that, that's worth the trip alone. But Guido says even though it hurts more, it's good to be there to help in the place you least expected to be needed. Absolutely, I'd love to, you know, I mean, it's kind of proud to give back to the town that I grew up in and, you know, raised me. He says they'll keep helping until the job is done. In Herkimer County, Andrew Sorensen, YNN. Herkimer County. can you see? It's a uniquely American scene. A cool summer night at the ballpark, the flag waving, the crack of a bat. These players fought hard to get here. It's a dream come true. You know, every kid that plays baseball wants to play in the major leagues, you know, and get paid to play the, the game that he loves to play. But it's a far cry from where players like Nicholas Clark started. I was a 50 cal gunner on a, on a uh, Humvee, and we were on a routine patrol, and uh, we were just coming through a little uh, tight little spot with some, some cliffs on the side and uh, we got ambushed from two sides with RPGs and small arms fire and that's how I lost my life. The Wounded Warriors amputee softball team has 15 Army and Marine veterans, all post 9-11 amputees. They're playing across the country to spread a simple message. Life without a limb is limitless. That's, that's our motto and that's what we live by. They raise money through charity games to show that despite what you've lost, you can still serve, still give back. And it's not just veterans, you know, like, like uh, Scotty, you know, the kid that threw out the first pitch today. Ten-year-old Scott Fura lost his arm at a young age. He's also their bat boy tonight. All the kids in my school are all, um, they, they all have two hands and two legs, so it's, it's fun being with these guys. Scott says he likes being with guys like him. I think it's pretty cool that I have one arm. Though he's still a bat boy, he lives their motto pretty well. My dad was a baseball captain for Oswego State College, and um, I'm just going to follow my dreams of being a baseball player. They're all following dreams in a way. Probably not as they ever intended, but Clark says they just refer to it as a new normal. I'm able to pay it forward. Uh, motivate, inspire people, and also uh, play the game that I love. It's not baseball, but softball's pretty fun, too. So four limbs or not, they want you to take a swing and recognize that life is truly limitless. In Utica, Andrew Sorensen, YNN.